Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to the Garden Report in Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York. Celtics win 129 106. We talked about the implications for the road team, Boston, where they're heading, the potential of that group. But there's a Brooklyn Nets team here that's now lost 13 of 15 that I do want to talk about since we're here and since they practiced as a full squad yesterday on Wednesday. They're feeling good about where they're at, even as they sink lower in the standings. They take some blowout losses. I know they got two in a row around the uh, 13 losses that they've racked up here since the Harden fiasco began. There's some good pieces in Brooklyn. You see Seth Curry hitting shots, creating a little bit. Obviously, I think the load on his plate's a little too large right now. But Andre Drummond, giving them some stuff at that five position, certainly some size in there, offensive rebound. The defense isn't great, but it's a good body to have in there, especially next to LaMarcus Aldridge. So this players, and Kevin Durant, he was every bit the MVP as any other player to start the first quarter of the season. He'll be back sooner rather than later, Steve Nash says, from the knee sprain that he had. Just about uh, end of January, I'd say, that happened, and Nets have been losing ever since. Why? Because Kyrie Irving's playing part-time. James Harden bombed out of town, and Ben Simmons, who is actually expected to return after Kevin Durant, still in reconditioning mode, which is interesting. He was working with Kyle Korver at practice yesterday. Not visible here in this game, although Goran Dragic, who the Nets just added in the buyout market as the rich get richer in terms of talent, was here shooting around pregame as he starts to work back from a conditioning standpoint. And Joe Harris hasn't been ruled out of this either, one of the best shooters in the NBA from last season. So. If everything comes back and hits perfectly for the Nets, you still look at this team as every bit the contender that the Celtics and Heat and Sixers and all these other teams in the East are. But is it going to happen? So the first big development we get this week actually out here is that Mayor Eric Adams is going to reel back the vaccine mandate that has prevented Kyrie Irving from playing a single game here at Barclays Center this year. It does look like Irving is going to return to Barclays, certainly by the playoffs, but maybe even by the end of the regular season. No timeline for the end of the mandate, but it does appear that it's going to come to an end by the end of this season and allow Irving to join the Nets full-time. And Nash, one of the things he talked about within the last few weeks here as well is that Irving playing part-time hasn't allowed him to get into that flow, the mid-season conditioning that a player normally would by playing night in and night out and having that rhythm into a season. So Irving, who's played solid so far, could reach another level as well. He was, of course, a 50-40-90 shooter last year. I have good confidence in Durant returning to form. And I like the guys that they added. Certainly, I think they won that Philly trade. I'm not counting on Harris to come back, but it will be a pleasant surprise and a big one at that if he does because they'll just have so much shooting at that point, certainly what they're missing here in this game. But the one guy I still wonder about here is Simmons. I don't know what and when is the bigger question because I think we know what Simmons brings at this point. He's not really going to change as a player, especially in this situation where I think the strength for him is stepping into this lineup, creating, not being a focal point offensively, but contributing the ball movement and being a point of attack defender to take the pressure off others where they have just gotten lit up this season, especially since the new year began. They're one of the worst defenses in the NBA. I just don't know how this is all going to come together, and we don't even have a look at it until Simmons gets back on the court. So there's no clear timeline or indication of when that's going to happen. We don't know exactly why he's not playing yet either. You would figure once he was traded, he was going to be able to step back into the lineup, and he had a week there during the All-Star break where he could have ramped things up even further. Uh, Dragic, you understand, he hasn't played since the early portion of the season, so he's going to need that conditioning period. How much is he going to bring after... Not his best season last year in Miami and only played five games with the Raptors, but didn't look great there either. Certainly a guy that can move the ball, hit shots, and they're higher on his defensive abilities than I think most people are, but we'll see how it fits into the greater scheme that they're going to build here. There's certainly talent to put together an excellent lineup here, and Kyrie returning full-time is just such a massive development. That was going to be an awkward situation well into the postseason. Now you'll ultimately have him, unless you play Toronto, That'll still be a complication for him if that ends up being the matchup. They're going to have this full team intact, you would think, by the playoffs. But how much time are you going to have to gel? I still don't like what Nash is doing with all the role players here, whether it's Bruce Brown, uh, Kessler Edwards, and the young guys. They haven't integrated, and they haven't pushed uh, these guys to 
be regular, consistent contributors. And Nash actually said something pregame about these guys and drilling on the fine details, whether they've lost so many games here that concern me. Uh, I think just continued growth, you know, the effort, intensity. I thought our guys have really played hard. Um, they've been ex extremely focused. Uh, they've come together, you know, under a lot of duress, you know, a lot of teams in uh, adverse situations pull apart. Our guys have come closer together. The spirit is outstanding. So more of the same, you know, more of the same. I mean, there's so many technical things you could look at, but, you know, it's the spirit that I'm most con concerned with. You know, the, the technical things are great. However, when you're missing, you know, you're kind of quote unquote top four players. You, you know, it's not fair to say like, I want you guys to fix a, B, and C, you know, I want you guys to approach it with the right attitude, the spirit, and compete and, uh, and continue to grow. That's, that's what I'm looking for. So I haven't loved the job Nash done in his head coach here, and it often does go back to those role guys. He's here for the Stars, and the Stars haven't always been present. Of course, just 16 games between the big three before Harden departed. He's going to make his debut in Philadelphia tomorrow, and the same problem still persists since he's left. The inability to get more out of the lower guys on the roster, I think, is hampering Nash. And what has he lost? Emi Odoka becoming the coach of the Celtics, Mike D'Antoni leaving and becoming an advisor elsewhere. Talented coaching, leaving his team within the last year or so here, I think has had a dramatic effect on the Nets. And as I watch them here, I don't have great confidence that they're going to get this together this year. And maybe they don't need to. But the expectation, as Sean Marks said after introducing Ben Simmons, is still championship here. And do they have enough time with just about 20 games together to get, get in the lineups, gel, win some games, raise their standing? They're certainly a playing team right now. And anything can go wrong in a playing scenario where one or two losses eliminates you from the playoffs entirely, not to mention the fact that you have to play a one or two seed on the road from the jump. So. Nets are running out of time here. Doc Rivers made it clear to me when I went to Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago that they know they don't have enough time to get this Harden and Embiid thing working, so they have to go into overtime to get it done. And for Simmons to not be out there yet, and for them to still be rolling out a part-time lineup without Irving for the next couple of weeks here, and Durant slowly working his way back, I don't know if there's enough time for the Brooklyn Nets to get together here, and I could be wrong. This could all come together perfectly if all these pieces hit the court healthy and connected come playoff time. I like what they have on paper, but it actually has to start to come together on the court, and that has rarely been the case for the Brooklyn Nets this year. So that's the last word from Brooklyn. We will not be back here unless there is a first-round meeting between those two teams. Check out my video on the ascent of the Celtics and just how high I think they're rising as the Nets continue to drop lower and lower in the East. I'm Bobby Manning, CLNS Media, Celtics All Access. Celtics play the Pistons on Saturday. We'll see you there then. As the Celtics keep rolling on their stretch run here, we'll have it covered back in Boston uh, before some more road games later in the season in Chicago and Milwaukee, officially booked for the last road trip of the year. We'll be out there for that. So stay tuned to everything at clnsmedia.com and Celtics CLNS on Twitter.